Miss um, Brenda, and I would like to thank Rally Gennar for assisting us in the formation training of our 37 candidates for the graduation. I wish to recall when I became your chairman as the Episcopal Commission of Family and Life in the whole Philippines. The first activity I had is to join the Holy Father in trying to prepare a very important document, which is Amores Leticia. It was in 2015 that together with Cardinal Chito Tagle, Archbishop Palma of Cebu, Archbishop Romulo Valles of Davao, of course, our secretary, Father Rico Ayo, who was one of the secretaries of the Synod, Mr. and Mrs. Villafania, Nelson and Cory, we were together in Rome for three weeks together with the Holy Father to craft the very important document of Amores Leticia. It was also the time that as your chairman, I tried my best to see the situation in the Philippines. Sad to say, there was only one program in almost all dioceses, which is pre-Cana. Other than that, there is no such thing as post-Cana and other initiatives, initiatives coming from our lay people. And because of this, I would like to thank Brenda for initiating this noble activity in the Philippines. One of the fruits of the 500 years and so many others, such as our advocacy in Congress, at the Senate, those young people who are advocates in the media platform to protect the family, our organizations that promote community life and experts in accompanying the family. Amoras Leticia has given us three important principles. The principle of accompaniment, the principle of discernment, and the principle of integration. I hope that what you have learned in this past five months will not, will not just be a certificate to be posted to be proud of when you are at home, that ends everything. I hope in the principle given by the Holy Father in Amoris the Teacher, you are instruments of accompanying people. And it means time. You know, when you have this uh, billing ovulation method, it is not just one say hello and goodbye. It is accompanying. Accompanying not just on the sexual matter, accompanying in the emotional, financial, even psychological issues of the family. Try to see that when you look at the billing ovulation method, it is not just about the sexuality, the sex relationship between a husband and wife. It is the holistic way of trying to understand life and a couple. Accompanying is a very important principle for us. The second, don't just leave the couples of those friends of yours in the diocese. You have to be a discerning facilitator of the family. And what is the cause, the source of discernment? No other than the Holy Spirit. You are not an ordinary health worker, my dear candidates for this graduation. Not an ordinary health worker. You are a Catholic family life facilitator. And one of your expertise 
is the billing ovulation method. Discernment because as a facilitator, you have to be experts in trying to see the movement of the Holy Spirit. How God is accompanying also our families and through you, advising them, caring for them, trying to understand the ups and downs of their experience. My dear candidates for the graduation, discernment starts with you. Don't practice discernment outside your life. Discernment in relation to your husband, to your wife, to your children. Discernment starts at home. And the third is integration. Will you just help Catholics? No. Everybody. Because in a way, these are expression of reaching out. Anybody, be it a Catholic, non-Catholic, educated or non-educated, making them part of the bigger body of Christ. And that makes you really a Catholic, universal. Because you don't just separate or segregate or choose other people. Be aware of these three important principles of Amores Leticia. The principle of accompaniment, the principle of discernment, and the principle of integration. Some of you are new, and I don't know if some of you are acquainted with me and the national conferences. Magkasama kami niyan, ni Lali, ni Brenda, ni Cecil, and some others who are national figures already. And during my term, from 2015 until November of this year, I explored these three principles. The year of accompaniment, the year of discernment, the year of integration. And you notice that in 2015, there was only one program. And I'm grateful to God that as I leave the chairmanship of the family in life, we have so many initiatives coming from lay people, not from the bishops, but from so many people. You will recall our ex bill. You will recall when I was in Cebu during our convention, many lay people were complaining against CBCP because as if CBCP has done anything. You will recall my message then I told you, yes, you will see any the documents, guidance, as we issued circulars, exhortations. But the work, the work of trying to take care of the family is the family itself. The work of taking care of the children, anything related to relationship of couples, It's the family itself. I I challenge everybody here during the convention if CBCP has done something for the family. We have set guidelines, exhortations, circulars, but who will do this in the field? Who will do this in advocacy? From then on, I'm happy because you've gone out of the identity of lay people. We have, so, we have only 120 bishops, but you are so many. And you try to point your finger to the bishop as if the bishop is your family. It's the father, the mother, and the children. You are the ones. And this first the virtual graduation, is your response to that kind of challenge I made in 2016. Again, thank you, Rally, Brenda, and all those family coordinators because you did not wait for me to organize this 
BOM conference. Thank you, Brenda, for regularly updating me of what is happening. The details of that, your relationship with us in Southern Luzon and also in Bicol here in my region. And I'm thankful that I've seen faces, familiar faces from the Visayas and from Mindanao. Hi, how are you? I'm still alive. I'm still alive because I am the member of family and life. And thanks, thank God. Because uh, had it been for the grace of God, last March or last April, I'm already cremated. Uh, now, uh, because of COVID, I'm still alive, giving family and life and inspiration to hope, to hope that God is always with us. So, challenge to all of you. Number one, I hope, these are my hopes. You report to your bishop. Sad to say, here in Lipa, I asked our young, our, our couples to study in the University of Asia and the Pacific. And sad to say, until then, the graduation that ends everything. I don't want to happen this in this graduation. But I see you here, and that's our last moment to see each other. And you say, I receive the diploma. Report to your bishop. Ask your bishop, bishop, I'm a graduate, an expert of the billing of your relation method. Number two, don't just keep your knowledge. Don't just keep your diploma. Make sure the whole diocese benefit from your five months of studies. Make sure that the priests, the religious, especially our families in the diocese would always feel that there is such thing as a person who is an expert in the billing ovulation method. Make sure, magbayabang kayo na alam nyo ang BOM. Magbayabang kayo na may experts kayo. That is your graduation. Because graduation is not only in school. But in life. My graduation pala kami doon sa webinar. Ito graduation na na. Oh. And lastly, hopefully, produce a digital video on what you have learned from la rally. Must be distinctively diocesan. No copy-paste. Rally, thank you very much for initiating knowledge. But knowledge, if it is just kept for oneself, is not knowledge. It is selfishness. It is selfishness because you just get and get so many diplomas, many knowledge only for you to run away from, from responsibilities. I would say, which is a challenge to all of you, that as you gain knowledge, training, practice, I say, make sure that these are not just for oneself or for both of you as husband and wife. Harinawa, ramdam ng diocese na kayo ay virtually graduate. I hope that your practice is not only, is not virtual. Meaning to say, hanggang bibig lamang, virtual, but never in practice. In the Philippines, I go around. There are so many who attended my conference, national conferences. I, you know, I have a secretary, Father Rico. After the conference, we would, we would check the delegates of the conference and ask, what have you done after our national assembly? Ah, uh, uh, Father, he is the one in charge. Oh, why were you there? Why were you in Bacolod? Why were you in, in, in Cebu? Why were you in, in that conference? 
because they would like to buy piaya. We would like to buy mango from Tendari Lang. You are there to attend a conference and you report to your bishop and do the assignment and what you have learned. Hopefully, this is not just a picture taking graduation, but a graduation which is alive. A graduation which has life. And I am addressing this not only for the Filipinos. I know that there are so many international audiences and will be viewing my message. This is the Philippines. And for us, as we celebrate 500 years, we will stop here in this graduation. We go on and on, gone. And we can even share this to our Asian brothers and sisters that we in the Philippines have started an initiative, particularly on one aspect in the family and life, which is the billing ovulation method. The graduation is not only for oneself, a certificate to be kept or to be hung on the wall. Graduation is always life. And when you have life, you multiply the effects of life and you create joy in the family. I congratulate you all for allowing yourselves to be molded by the training facilitated by Rally and for the initiative of Brenda, Force of Assistance of Cecil, and everybody. Kumusta kayo dyan sa Mindanao, sa Visayas? This is RSB from the Archdiocese of Lipa, the chairman of the Episcopal Commission on Family and Life. Thank you very much.